Well, hello, hello. This is Dr. Amig, your friendly rheumatologist from On Average MD. Okay, today we are talking about what to expect when you have been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So the first thing is that this is one of those disease condition that it's totally fine to have them because we have amazing treatment. And so you have to know that our goal for treatment in rheumatoid arthritis is complete disease remission. What does that mean? That means that you have no more joint pain, no more swelling, no more morning stiffness, and that you can live a totally normal life. We are currently in 2023 and we have amazing treatment. So do not despair. We have incredible treatment. Whatever you're learning on internet is outdated. So it may be six months ago, it may be 10 years ago, you do not know. And the truth is that your story is your story. You do not know what's going to happen, but I can tell you we have amazing treatment and your goal is full remission. Second thing is that because your immune system is overactive, our goal with our treatment is to decrease the immune system to put it back in balance. Really remember those words. We are putting this back into balance. You can achieve... Um, not necessarily disease remission, but you can achieve like improved rheumatoid arthritis with a bunch of techniques that are not medication uh, related. And I will talk about this later. Know that when we are using a treatment is to get this faster, because we know that the earlier we get you to remission, the better, the less uh, erosion there is, the less disease inflammation there is. Remember that the inflammation isn't just in your joint, even if that's maybe the most proeminent uh, symptoms. You may have inflammation in your vessel, in your heart, and so on, okay? So now the next step. So our goal, now we know, is disease remission or minimal disease activity, okay? I like to go for remission because I just feel that that's where my patient should be 100%. But sometimes you can have one joint pain or one swollen joint, and that will be okay depending on how many treatments we've tried before. In terms of the treatment, let's talk treatment. So you have what we call uh, conventional uh, DMARD and biologic or small molecule DMARD. DMARD is just a fancy abbreviation that just means disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. It just means that there is some randomized control trial, so the sort of the biggest uh, proof of um, a treatment that it's working uh, in science and that those treatments have proven that they work uh, to improve the uh, rheumatoid arthritis and to prevent erosion uh, in the long term, okay? So that is what we call a DMARD. You have the conventional, those are, you know, the synthetic, basically, uh, they are the old ones, so plaquenil, methotrexate, and so on, all of those. Um, and then you have the biologic or the small molecule. The biologic are derived from a living organs, whereas the small molecules are chemically derived. But really, at the end of the day, they all act the same. They are targeted to decrease the inflammation in your body. And when I say targeted, it's really important to realize prednisone, which I'm sure you've heard about, it's a steroid, is not targeted. It's a wonderful and an awful drug at the same time. You do not want to be on prednisone forever. Maybe you're on it for a little bit, but honestly, my patient, I try not to tell them, not to give them any prednisone at all, because that is a failure on my part. If I give them prednisone, I want them to be in remission without prednisone, because there's so many side effects, and it is not targeted. On the other side, you have a biologic agent or small molecules that are much more targeted. So it's going to target the TNF. So when I say this, those are cytokines that are pro-inflammatory. So TNF, IL-1, IL-6, those are like the main one. They cause a ton of inflammation. They are good when they are in balance, but if they are in balanced, unbalanced, they cause inflammation and they cause uh, joint swelling, they cause joint pain, but they can also cause destruction of your joint. And so we have now drugs that can really act on the TNF. So those are called TNF inhibitor. You may have heard on TV, uh, Umira, uh, Adalimumab, Etanercept, uh, Infliximab. We have so many. I think we have more than five plus now the biosimilar. 
all right? So we have a lot of them. We also have anti-IL-6, anti-IL-1, uh, and then we have other ones which are like small, uh, smaller targets, uh, and we have an unbelievable amount of drugs and rheumatoid arthritis, which is why I go back to do not settle for less than full remission in your case. It is remission with treatment, but it's still remission with a totally normal life. So once we decide on what uh, medication we start you, what you have to have, you have to have a little bit of an idea of how we get there. The first step is, and we're always going to try to de- to have full remission with the least amount of immunosuppression. So the first step is usually, we usually try methotrexate because it's a very powerful drug. I will do a video on methotrexate and what to expect with methotrexate, okay? Methotrexate is wonderful, it's great. You do need some blood work on a regular basis, uh, but overall, relatively well tolerated and a very cheap drug. So you take methotrexate and then we evaluate you, considering that you're tolerating well and that everything is good at three months. It's really simple from a rheumatology standpoint. You see your rheumatologist and they either tell you you are in remission or minimal disease activity. Maybe you have one joint that's swollen or painful and that's it. And then maybe, yeah, you can maybe, you know, wait. Um, Or you're not, or you have more than that. And if that's the case, then we add something. We usually add a biologic. Historically, because the TNF inhibitor were the first one to come out, we usually start a, a TNF inhibitor. But it is possible that we may choose another than the TNF inhibitor. It's also, it's really funny, but it's also possible that your insurance is asking us to start with another biologic. Don't worry, it's totally fine, unless you have a contraindication for another of the agent. Any any treatment is okay. We start somewhere. One day, we will have a blood work that will tell us, yeah, this is the medication that uh, we need to get to full remission. Right now, we're still in the learning process of all of this, okay? And so, methotrexate, if it didn't work perfectly, you add a biologic uh, or a small molecule. And then, if that doesn't work after three months, you change the biologic. You change the biologic. And every three months, you do like this. All that to say that usually... After the first, uh, we would say, like, I think the, the studies are showing that about two thirds of our patients respond to just methotrexate. In my practice, I have to tell you that it's a little bit less than that, but that's totally fine uh, because we have those biologic. And then uh, the biologic, I would say that another good two third will respond to the biologic. TNF inhibitor are unbelievable. They are actually the reason I became a rheumatologist. Uh, and so you start uh, those, and then every three months, if you're not at full remission, you just change. Know that normally, and I want you to hear this if this is your first diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, the vast majority of chances is that you're going to respond to just methotrexate. And then you have just this plan A, plan B, plan C in your head, knowing that we've got you. Okay? Now, what, what do you need to know about uh, all of our drugs? So as I mentioned, your immune system is overactive, so we need to calm it down. So our drugs, what they do is that they decrease and they calm down your immune system. The issue is that if you were to have an infection, because your immune system is calmed down, it may not be as reactive as it would normally have been. And so you cannot just brush away a fever you actually have to make sure that this is not something serious, that you don't need antibiotics. Uh, You cannot brush a a wound that's getting infected. Um, And, you know, maybe in your, when you were 15, 14 years old, you would get uh, infected on your skin and it would go away. Well, with our drugs, you actually have to do something about it. Maybe it's a topical antibiotic or something, but just don't brush it off. And then the other thing is, Stop the medication during that time. You want to stop uh, the biologics, the small molecule, and so on. Uh, So that's really important. Um, And what else? You can have allergic reaction. Those, we cannot really predict them. I would say that it's very rare. I don't see a lot of patients with allergic reaction. What I see a lot is fear. And because you have fear, uh, it causes a little bit of issues when you're about to get this uh, medication. I've done rheumatology for more than 20 years now because I've done it in France and then in the US. 
And I can tell you the fast, the really the 99.999% of our patients have no allergic reaction. So just know that it's well tolerated. Those drugs are well tolerated. Okay. Um, other uh, things that you may develop is an injection site reaction. For those, my recommendation is to um, actually use an ice cube that you put before you get the injection. That actually can help some of our patients. And then if you feel like the welts are a little bit too much, there are things that we can do to help you. If it's too much, we just change. Um, so that's, those are things that you have to uh, look. Don't, don't look for them, know them. And then now they are in the back of your head and you know what to do and you know that you need to talk to your um, doctor. You need to know about some side effects, again, to know not to worry about them. Um, so some drums can increase your risk of shingles. Uh, so if you do develop shingles, know that it might be uh, some drugs. And unless it's, you know, the, like, Unless it's not like if it is your first line or second line, I would say personally, maybe you want to switch drugs. Uh, normally, you should have been vaccinated against shingles. Um, but if you haven't and if you are developing, if you have and you still develop shingles, then maybe that drug is not for you and we may want to switch. Uh, but that's, you know, that's uh, fairly easy. Um, some other things that you may want to know is that um, you, that there are some drugs in general, drugs that are, decrease the immune system may cause a risk of skin cancer. It's not the melanoma, which are, you know, the one that we are always dreading. It's just the regular skin cancer that come when you're exposed to sun. The bottom line is you want to see a dermatologist once a year so that we make sure that you don't have anything that needs to be removed. It's, it's, again, it's fairly easy and this is good. It's preventive. Okay. Um, other drugs can cause clots in your legs and your lungs, as well as cardiovascular issues. Um, so this is where really it's an art. Your doctor is, uh, needs to know you very well and to figure out what, uh, are your risk to really balance the risk of a drug versus the risk of your rheumatoid arthritis. So that's really important. But if you were to develop uh, clots in your legs or in your, um, in your lungs, that shows up as pain in your cough or shortness of breath or palpitation. Okay. Those are like important for you to know. It's not going to happen like this. It's not after the first, uh, the first time you take it or the first week you take it, but it's something that you want to know. So if you're a smoker, there are some drugs that I would not recommend for you because they do increase those risks. All right. Um, and then there are some other drugs that can cause some inflammation in your abdomen, some sort of infection. Uh, it, again, this is something that we will talk if you are a patient of mine or if you have your own rheumatologist, talk with them because it depends on the patient what drugs we're going to choose for them. Okay. Um, again, don't worry about them. Just know them. Education is so important and knowledge is power. Now, I know you want to, uh, uh, you were going to ask me, yeah, well, but in addition to those drugs, did you hear? I said, in addition to those drugs, I didn't say instead. Well, yes, in addition to those drugs, there are things that you can do. Uh, overall, the idea is to decrease the inflammation in your body, right? So things that I've proven to help with rheumatoid arthritis are a healthy diet that's a Mediterranean diet or anti-inflammatory diet. So basically it's trying to uh, limit sugar, trying to limit dairy, trying to limit um, red meat. And so I don't like limiting myself. So personally, the way I see it is increasing the vegetables, increasing the fruits, increasing fish um, and lean meat. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's the way that you want to change in your mind what you're eating. All right. Losing weight, if you are overweight, actually can decrease the inflammation because fat cells are pro-inflammatory. Okay. So this is actually quite important to know that you can decrease uh, with just losing weight, you can decrease or changing and exercising and, and having more muscle and less fat, you can actually help your rheumatoid arthritis. Some other things, which I always find so fascinating and so wonderful, and I've looked at the studies and they work, meditation, uh, uh, visualization actually help. Uh, they 
probably uh, stimulate the vagal nerve. And so that's the other thing that would hurt, uh, singing, humming, stimulating your vagal nerve. Um, that helps with decreasing inflammation. There's actually a study that's ongoing, stimulating the vagal nerve in there. They are putting some uh, electric stimulation with uh, a little box, and they are looking to see if it's going to help rheumatoid arthritis. My guess is that it will help. Um, but you can do it without putting anything inside of your body and just being very uh, mindful. Uh, and then proper rest, because resting is actually healing. And when you sleep properly, you actually can help the healing. All right, that's a lot of information. I hope this helps you to understand that in front of you, if you have been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, there is a lot of hope. And I, uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask me. Those are not medical advice, but I love educating people about anything rheumatology. So hopefully that was wonderful for you. Don't hesitate to share. And if you want to learn more about my practice, I opened the first direct care slash concierge care rheumatology practice in Denver, Colorado, and we are currently accepting new patients. It's a wonderful thing to see you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Hey.